Good evening, everyone. It has been two days since Budget 2022 was announced by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. And hopefully, analysts have read it, absorbed it, and deconstructed it. And today in ADU's chat room, we have three experts who will dissect it service-wise for our audience, explaining the pros and cons of this budget. Under the umbrella of Make in India and Atmanirbhar Bharat, let me introduce you to all of them. We have with us today Major General Ashok Kumar, who is a Kargil war veteran, a defense analyst, visiting fellow of CLAWS, and specializes on neighboring countries with special focus on China. He has commanded an infantry brigade on LSC with China close to 1962 conflict areas. Commodore Ranjit P. Rai is a specialist navigator and Air Force trained air controller who attended the Yarrow Shipyard, HMS Dryad, and RN Staff College, London. Commanded three ships, and the Indian Naval Academy served as Director of Operations and Intelligence, and was Defense Advisor in Singapore for Southeast Asia. He has been the Vice President of the Indian Maritime Foundation and has authored five books. Wing Commander Raman Sapori, who is the founder and president Aerospace and Defense Consultants Association of India, is an engineer from the Indian Air Force by background, has experience of managing all aircraft assets, ground to air, ground to ground communication assets, radar and engineering and HR resources on 24 seven basis with zero effect, zero defect. Welcome, gentlemen, to this discussion. It promises to be most absorbed. I now request Sangeeta Saxena, ADU editor, to please take this discussion forward. Thank you very much, Atali. And welcome all three of you, sirs. Wonderful to have all three of you at the show together. You know, we've uh, it's just been absolutely great that today when we want to discuss the budget, we don't have to wait for one person to tell us about all the three forces. Here we have with us three of them from each force trying to talk about his own force. So welcome, sir. Welcome, Ashok, sir. Welcome, Ranjit, sir. Welcome, Raman, sir, to ADU's chat room. And I think we can begin with Ashok, sir. You know, the biggest uh, force uh, gets priority. So uh, Ashok, sir, coming to you. What is the condition of the Indian Army in Budget 2022? Uh, thanks, ma'am. Uh, I think being the first speaker, I also say a few words about the overall budget before moving on to the Army specifically so that the uh, person who hears it understands it in totality. So as you are well aware that the defense budget this time has been uh, 5,25,166 crores. Now it is being touted that it has got an increase of 9.82%. But uh, let me remind you that this increase of 9.82% is from the BE assessment of the current financial year, which is you know, going. If you compare this figure from the revised estimate, which has already come in, then the increase is merely to the tune of 5%. In fact, the total allocation is not even inflation adjusted. Second issue is that if you see the allocation as percentage of the overall uh, budget, it has been the lowest in the last five years. In fact, in 2018-19, it was 17.74% uh, of the total budget. It kept declining. The current financial year, it is uh, going to be 13.35%. And the one for the next for which this budget has come is going to be merely 13.30%. Now, one may uh, argue that when the budget outlay itself has increased, so even a reduced percentage will meet our requirement. But I have given you both the comparisons of the overall allocation in not being inflation adjusted and this figure as well. So that is the long story. Now, coming to the capital budget, uh, so to say, the, uh, there have been some increase uh, from the previous year. It is approximately 12.18%. And that 
amount which has come has been allocated to the army navy and air force now since uh, purchase of rafal and so many uh, other equipments which are being inducted in the air force and the navy because uh, both the navy and air force are the platform centric uh, services and therefore a single platform itself uh, requires a huge budgetary support so there have been some increase to there this thing but the worst part has been the reduction in the capital outlay for the indian army that too at a time when we are standing face to face with china uh, since the time the budget has uh, been announced uh, i have had informal interactions with various people and one school of thought has been since the army has not been able to spend its allocated capital it had to return so therefore the allocation has been reduced but that is a very very lame logic i will give you an example from the layman's life let's say suppose you decide for your survival you require 1 liter of water but due to certain conditions even let's say suppose you are interviewing us and you don't get time you are able to consume only 200 ml does this mean that the uh, next uh, day you should be allocated only 200 ml so this is a lame argument by which the army has been allocated much much less budget just imagine it has to do the uh, ad upgrade it has to bring in the rocket force it has to bring in the technological advancements it has to change the weaponry of the entire uh, army uh, so we have to look at what has prompted wherein army could not spend you know that kind of thing which we will you know take care once we come to the suggestions in the end but the budget the logic of reduction is you know totally in unbelievable now coming to the you know certain things which uh, especially affect army of course there are you know related impacts for the other services uh, well because in this budget uh, the direct takeaways are very very minimal it said the budgetary allocation and the capital outlay being said uh, really speaking there are only three direct takeaways one is that the acquisition from domestic industry has been increased from 58% to 68% uh, whether it is to army navy air force that is a separate issue the, the it is the uh, domestic uh, atmanirbhar bharat and you know that is the thrust which has been given uh, second is that they have focused more on research and development and the total allocated budget out of that 25% they have earmarked which can be claimed by the startups academia like our iits and the uh, startups uh, and the private industry so uh, it is a wider participation and in you know, a meaningful change which has been done third positive thing they have done which is directly going to affect us and other services also that there are going to be a nodal body for the certification and testing now in the procurement process all those who have been directly involved i also being one of them uh, they realize that in absence of this uh, nodal agency uh, giving out testing and certification our procurement process gets delayed inordinately especially in the you know uh, army where the large number of equipment and you know each facet of the equipment requires different kind of standards the first step the government moved that as against the uh, outside certification they started accepting the indian certifications in the areas that existed but with this nodal body coming up i think this will be going to be huge positive game changer so these are the only three positive takeaways but then there are number of uh, indirect uh, things which you know this budget outlines one is that uh, it says that the uh, dpsus seven of them which have been formed uh, they have been given a budgetary support of 1130 crores Uh, i have had the opportunity of interacting interacting with them when you know the thought was being uh, evolved uh, for their transfer from this kind of mode which has happened uh, they require around uh, 10000 crores capital budget outlay for their support and then thereafter they should be able to sustain so as against this 13 10 crore which has been given for yearly support which will be required in this manner are some reduced or increased matter in the next year also as against the government wasting that kind of money had they given a uh, corpus of 10000 crore i think that would have been a much more you know uh, better model now uh, border roads again there has been increased as against 2500 crores they have been given 3500 crore 40% increase 
and uh, they have specified the uh, Sela Tunnel and Nechipu. Both are on the axis from Tejpur to Tawang. And therefore, it will address our you know, concern as far as the connectivity is concerned. Of course, the requirement of laterals and the axials which are there in forward areas uh, uh, in eastern Ladakh, in Himachal, in Uttarakhand, in uh, Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh, that is you know, far much than what kind of budgetary support has been uh, done. But uh, it, is, it is at least in the positive direction. Now, uh, there have been uh, statements that they are trying to make uh, certain existing villages uh, more livable. Some kind of infrastructure development is being planned. Uh, those who have been watching China will know that he has already created 624 model villages. And in the agreement between India and China, both in 1999 and 2005, and uh, wording has been inserted that in any future deliberations, we will not disturb the settled population. So now when he is going to come close to the LSE, I think there was a need for us also to not only take care of the existing villages, and, but also to move forward in the villages, more so in the eastern Arunachal Pradesh. We also must be aware that there is a reverse migration in Uttarakhand. Almost 20% uh, percent villages have got the large number of people who have come to uh, Dehradun and to uh, Noida, to Delhi. So reverse migration has to be arrested and therefore the health and education has to be you know, taken care of, you know, and army has to play a big role in that. So uh, uh, in addition to the existing villages, which is in any case is good step so that reverse migration doesn't take place, there is a need to take the civil population close to the border. And that will require that the roads itself you know, reach there, then only the population can uh, reach there. Of course, there are some you know, uh, unsaid spin-offs like the development of the 5G and communication infrastructure with which everybody will benefit. Uh, there is a no road network development, rail network development, faster trains, dedicated corridors. All those will you know, support the logistics and movement in a, in a big way for any conflict. And also, uh, uh, there are two issues which I wanted to uh, flag. Uh, one is that the... Uh, uh, there was high expectation uh, in the minds of all the security people that they will probably this time come up with the concept of non-relapsable budget, which is a very, very crying need. Uh, it was recommended by 15th, uh, 15th uh, Finance Commission, and there was a huge hope that this will be done this time, but it hasn't happened for reasons best known to the government. And uh, also, the, the, uh, I think the budget makers uh, didn't have the clear vision about the kind of fight which we are going to have in the immediate future. Uh, today, we are facing uh, each other in LAC. The battle may not take place at all, but should it take place, I think we will uh, go into the major emergency procurement, major challenges, purchasing one thing which can be purchased today in one rupee in hundred rupees. So there is, I think, lack of clear-cut vision which is required to fight us in a collusive manner against China and Pakistan. And that kind of equipping, equipping and budgeting support is missing and more so for the army. They have kept the army naked. That is all I have to say as far as the army budget is concerned. Thank you so much, General Ashok. I think that was very, very, you know, open and nice and very, very analytical so that we understand a lot of things our audience understands, which it generally does not understand, you know. So, uh, you know, moving from the army to the very, very happy service, Ranjit sir, the Navy. And, uh, you know, the Navy is very happy about its allocation. So, so we go ahead from here with you, sir. Why, what is there to be so happy, sir? Well, uh, I must say, <clears throat> General Ashok Kumar has given you a very economic view with facts and figures. But the basic fact and figure, we have got 2.1% of the GDP. The Defense Committee said three. We've never reached it. So we are inching forward. So I should say everybody should feel happy. Now we come to two general points before I tell you why the Navy is happy. The Navy was unhappy. 2017 Doklam, the budget was reduced from 20% to 14%. I mean, all the Navy chiefs, including uh, the uh, previous Navy chief, but they managed. And therefore the order book is very big. And therefore they had to be made happy sometime because they had to do it in the estimates. They gave them 46,000 to get all the ships. We have now 41 ships for order. Therefore, it was given, but Navy was still careful, only spent 41,000. 
Now, I'll just go back a little and say then came Ladakh, where Mirza Ashok Kumar has told us everything about it. But the army was given whatever it wanted. The guns came, the Vajra came, Mo Vajras are coming, 1-5 camp came, Danosh came, Brahmos were put up on the border. The men were given the best equipment thing, yet they could not spend half the capital budget. So, I am a very practical person. Practical person. Maybe economics, we've gone down, we want more help. What can you eat? The Navy can eat. Now we come to the Air Force. The Air Force also got a better budget. The Prime Minister took it on himself to go to France and order 36 rifles. You have seen LCA program has been jumped up. MiG 29s are being upgraded and the Mirages are being upgraded. So money went in there. Now, naturally, they said that we have to go. So I'll come to that, that it is a, rather under the circumstances. India's GDP went down because of COVID. I mean, how could you just keep splurging when we have poverty, unemployment? And of course, we need to build up the villages. I fully agree with that. Uh, so I now come to straight away to the Navy, why I'm happy, and I'll make it very brief. The Navy has got 46,000 uh, plus uh, crores in 46,000. Uh, 21.54 crores for its uh, capital budget. And therefore, it can afford to give you Vikrant, it can give you Vishakapatnam, it can give you 41 ships. And every person, whether it is Arun Prakash or it is uh, uh, the external affairs minister, the Navy has to be beefed up because China has got a geography. Geography dictates strategy. China has got an easy strategy, they have flat land on Ladakh and on our borders. But the Navy is the advantage of the Indian Ocean. The Navy is your advantage. And any maritime strategy in history has told you has to depend on a maritime nation for its future. So we have got a very good budget. We have got more things. Air Force has been given. And very good cap what uh, Major General Ashok Kumar told you. The ordnance board has been broken up and they've given them, I think, 11,000 crores for these new and given them a subsidy of 1,100 crores. So please go ahead and corporatize well, become businessmen, sell, buy, I mean, build equipment and give it to them. So I say that that also has been a very good step. The Air Force, they will also get what they can digest. The Navy is able to digest because the order book is very big. Owings are there. And uh, therefore, the Navy spent the capital amount of budget. The Air Force also could spend only 70% of its capital budget. So if I'm an economist, I say, Isko itna diya, saal, de do. But they do practically kitna kharchenge. And always the defense minister said, if you need more money for the defense of this country, you will get. So I think we should trust a very thinking person who was the defense minister. She knows what defense was all about. And four budgets. So she knows what she's done. And I would say, someone who's analyzed the budget for years, that I can analyze and say, within the circumstances, within what the army gave up, within what the Air Force gave up, and within what the Navy has achieved. And I will end by telling you, the Brahmos of the Navy is going to the Philippine Navy for the Marines. $355 million are coming. Surely it comes to the MOD, it'll go to Russia, Brahmos Limited. The RDO is a five billion dollar company. So I mean, we have got all the facts and figures and numbers of the economist, which is right. But we have to look at it from the practical point of view. And I think I've told you why the Navy revenue budget of the um, army has not been touched at all. The army is happy. I mean, it's a very difficult job up in Ladakh in that cold climate. They have not been denied uniform. They have not been a, the Air Force running flights all the time uh, to the. And the border road organization has done a magnificent job. The highest road in the world has been built by them. They've got enough money, as uh, General Ashoka told you. Uh, revenue budget is not that. Yes, capital budget. And, and I'll end with my novel story. Lagega Robin Hood, a rich Air Force or Army, say, Mardia, because that's the way we started. But I think we should look at it practically. Right. That was great, Ranjit, sir. And, you know, always... Always a pleasure to listen to you. 
and i think so very nicely explained because navy does have a lot more on its plate as far as its order book is concerned and now from the navy so we go to the indian air force and we have wing commander raman supori who also you know heads a council defense consultancy organization and i'm sure is getting a lot of responses in the last 2 3 days i've been seeing that he's getting a lot of responses on the budget sir what is there for indian air force in the plate which has been put forth by our finance minister sir thank you ma'am and thank you my seniors and uh, thanks for inviting me uh, the air force is slightly different from the other two services number 1 the war when it takes place the reaction time is very less the pilot in the cockpit of an aircraft a fighter aircraft has got no time to take decisions so you look at a platform whether it's a russian fleet or a non russian fleet or a western fleet the pilot is not flying a aircraft he is flying a computer with his digital um, computer in the cockpit mission computer he has got radars electronic warfare system weapon system all are integrated it's a network of network flying and in today's war nobody is flying in isolation there are pilots flying in the air there are ground support system there are adjoining pilots there are aerostat radars there are electronic warfare systems everything is working in what is called the c4 isr system i'm sure the other two services all do it so if you look at any typical fighter aircraft to start with you also have the avax systems today both the ones which have come from outside and also indigenous system so any such platform today while the hardware has got 30% of the cost of a platform 70% of this cost is the software so it's a lesson for all the three services what is the human resource you have in india to develop this software unfortunately this problem which is hitting us from the bottom no foreign oem is giving you any software interface capability whether is a russian or not russian so my first thing would be how have you been able to acquire these systems from the oems even today we are acquiring those systems without any knowledge on the software capabilities you can indigenize the platform but you cannot replace the software which has come from foreign source you can do make in india because you have no knowledge on the interface system at all let me give an example of mig 29 zook radar navy wanted to replace the radar but we have no knowledge of interface systems you have the system coming from israel for missile systems you can do the hardware design but you can't have the software so i would have said some budget allocation for this lacuna in the entire system i congratulate indian navy for having come out many many years ago with 15 years indigenization plan i am yet to see a similar document from army or air force and a yearly review of what is happening in these plans so that is first lesson air force must draw i am not happy with the money allocated to the air force although air force got a larger chunk this year but the system which are required to be purchased by way of the additional rafale aircrafts or any other aircrafts the missile systems money is always less but the question is how much of this budget they'll be spending on the modern modernization of the radar systems because if you have just a platform without make in india electronic warfare system or make in india radar systems or the indigenous uh, air traffic management system then it is just a sitting duck you can't be fighting a war sitting in your own glass house you have to see what the adversary is doing and here i would like to give my salute and uh, solace to uh, our ex general bipin rawat who unfortunately died in a crash now what was the reason today we have technology solutions to overcome such kind of disasters the country lost a very a distinguished soldier and of course many of the people lost their life so the decision making to implement solutions is very important you can have money money was not a problem it was not a very expensive solution a company had given a solution to the air force 2 years back nothing happened it went to bharat electronics nothing happened 
private sector is willing to invest and find solution. See the inventory which Air Force has got today. You have to see what is the return on the investment on the thing. So the question is, for every aircraft, every system which is lost, or it is lying in the ground because of aircraft on ground, it is actually loss of money. You can keep on buying new assets, but what about assets on the ground? So the revenue budget, whatever we've got, should have been used properly. What does the Air Force need today? The platform system, which of course L says there. We have got missile systems going on. We have got radars in pipeline. We have got uh, data links in pipeline. We have got software defined radios in pipeline. We have got uh, many, many such systems. But today's war is going to be information warfare, war in the space, war in the ground. There are many systems which are applicable to all the three services. I feel there must be separate budget allocation, not for Army, not for Air Force, not for Navy, but for the common systems. There is no point every service reinventing the wheel. For example, software divine radio is required by the Army for the tanks. It requires Navy for ground systems, for the aircrafts. It is required by the Air Force also. I am not seeing this happening because every service is buying a different software defined radio. Same is the case with various software. So better you know, utilization of the money is required. Every service is having its own tendering system. See, money will always be limited. The question is, there must be some money allocated for joint systems. If we have a radar system, whether from Russian or non-Russian fleet, what is so good? India has got the capability to do that. But you develop one vendor for developing radar for the Air Force, you have another vendor driving the order to the Navy or to the Army or to DRDO. But we as a country, if we are talking of Atman Nirbhar Bharat, can India get C-band, S-band, X-band, L-band radar systems there? If you know the current aircraft systems, are using S-band or L-band software defined radio, the new generation like S-band. So we are spending years and years not able to spend the money. So I would say that let there be a separate budget for all of these services, what are the common systems? So better utilization assets would be there. My other issue would be the make in India solution for solving the problem. Having said that, we have a lot of in-house knowledge within three services. We have a lot of maintenance yards, naval aircraft yards, army base workshop, air force base repair depots. The huge land banks available there, which are absolutely not able to maintain, you know, so much of land. So the time would be the nearest command headquarters must adopt some academic institutions if I was there to take decisions, I would have said, I have got this much land back. I have got an old hangar. Let me invite some startup companies to work there after it's come national asset itself. So if we have to boost the startup India, if we have to have the R&D invest done, I am sure many of the academia today are wanting to invest into technology, but they don't have the funds available. So I would say the same money, if it is spent judiciously, and uh, properly with mentorship available from the private industry, they'll be able to do that. Why should private sector invest in academy unless there's in, you know, some uh, benefit to me? Today, my organization is investing time, money with a lot of academia. We are doing a lot of work, but it's from our own resources. If we are able to get some tax benefits, you will find the Make India story, which is 30% to 70%, we will start exporting more and more. The faster time to market is important. Today, we do not have an Indian software-defined radio for the Air Force. We do not have identification friend or foe, which is made in India. We've been struggling for the last five years. So the question is, platforms can be purchased from Lockheed Martin, from Boeing, from XYZ. But where is the story of joint membership? So with that, I close. We can have some more 
discussion that. So I think electronic warfare is something which can do commonly. Let each service not rediscover the lean. The software development could be a joint organization. We have uh, VESI in the Navy. We have got uh, Army Software Development Establishment, Imer, Cy Army Cybersecurity. We have got uh, Air Force itself having a lot of work when the information warfare. So information warfare, space, and software is something to be to mind. You will find better utilization of the money and our three services would be more potent to start with. Because unless you have your own software control, you can spend millions of dollars, thus aircraft or the weapon system would be duck. Thank you. Over to you. All right. Thank you very much, Raman, sir. I think that was very nicely explained and also good suggestions given. Uh, I go back to General Ashok. General Ashok, uh, are there some suggestions you have which you feel would be very apt uh, in the case of budget allocations and, you know, uh, in trying to maintain a balance between the budget given to the three services, keeping in mind their size? and requirement. Definitely. I have uh, two suggestions to make and I would like to utilize the platform of ADU and you being at the helm of affairs of this, you know, setup uh, to tell uh, the people who matter the most. My first point, which I've already said that the budget must be relapsable. So you must use your uh, links, connections and impress upon the defense minister if it has not happened this year, it must happen next year. This is required by the nation and armed forces critically. Second, my suggestion is you must take it to the uh, our chief or the MS branch in whatever manner possible that in case they continue to handle their HR for procurement in the manner they are doing now, they will be never be able to spend the budget. For army not being able to spend the budget, there are three main pitfalls. One is the quality HR not being posted and whosoever uh, gets posted by the time he uh, gains certain amount of expertise, he is again changed. I think there is a need to have a system that a person who is in procurement, you know, if he has to remain in Delhi or anywhere for that matter for five years, seven years, 10 years, how does it make a difference for nation's good? So that the HR aspect is very, very important. Second, the uh, defense procurement uh, procedure, uh, while there has been improvement and new versions have come up to address some of the concerns, but those who are dealing with that intimately will realize that there are miles to go in that procedure itself. It needs to be simplified. And third, the last one in the, in the same uh, facet, I think the entire uh, hierarchy of the armed forces, as well as those in the uh, defense audit department are in the finance, they are all operating from the uh, trust deficit, from a platform of fear, because number of things have happened. Let's say coal secretary had to you know, uh, undergo a lot of problem for whatever had happened. Now, uh, it has become a practice that what, whichever files go to the um, auditors or the people uh, from IFA and you know, Ministry of Finance, uh, they always you know, make it believe that at least unless the file is returned three times, four times, the concept of due diligence is not there. Otherwise, if they have some observations and naturally the people must contribute constructively, if a file goes with a proposal, they are you know, at liberty to write 101 uh, issues if they find there is a flaw but they should not have the option of you know, revisiting that time and again. So currently, the uh, entire system is operating to save themselves rather than you know, doing the procurement and that kind of the uh, ecosystem needs to be created. That is all I have to say on uh, the budget, so to say. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I think that was the very good points which you got ahead. And now coming to Ranjit sir, Ranjit sir, what about the Navy? What about the suggestions you have for, uh, you know, budget, budget allocation? Yes, it's been good. But then are there any other suggestions uh, in which, you know, the advancement of the Navy and the budget could, you know, go hand in hand and uh, you get the best out of, since you yourself said, and the world says that, uh, you know, the Navy is the most required with the current geopolitical situation, both in the Indian Ocean and in the South China Sea. Well, uh, I'll just come very briefly to the suggestion, but I think an excellent discussion has taken place. So I'll just go through a quick snapshot why I consider the budget has been reasonable. Because the capital budget of 1.313 lakh crore, 
the revenue budget of 2.33 crores has gone up 9 to 12 percent. So you've got more than last year you got. We talked about who didn't spend more, who didn't spend less. Uh, your revenue budget is very intact. Your salaries have gone up. Your perks have gone up. They are all being done. And even the men in the dark and the soldiers of the border and also our ships going around the world showing the flag has been managed with that revenue budget. The uh, nuclear submarine, etc. is a different subject. Country. The Navy is building two huge bases it never had. One at Tarwar and one at Ramboli, which will be a very beautiful base. It is upgraded elements. So with this budget, the nation is managing. Yes, I agree with you. From 30,000 uh, uh, to 32,000, a small downgrade, which is upsetting the army. But that is what the capability to spend because they've got a lot to handle themselves. The Air Force has got a very good job. Uh, Comparatively, of course, you want more fighters, you'll have to go the Rafael way. The Prime Minister did it. But they've got 52,000 uh, uh, crows, black crows. So they've got it. The Navy, yes, 47,000 crows for the uh, 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 capital budget. The pension has gone up slightly, which we should not normally include in our defense budget. Because then you calculate the dollars, it goes to $60 billion, but actually it is 58 some billion dollars. But of course, it is a reason for uh, budget whatsoever. And finally, the suggestion, because you have got very good suggestions, but you know you have to help the service has to help itself. You have to help the DRDO. The Navy has always got a design. They paid for the ATV design, built that ATV, and things are going on. Uh, Rebels hopefully will know that the Navy's command and control system is all software. It was done. And today, the government has given the vice chiefs of naval staff. It has given the commands. Allocation of money. The Navy went and hired two Guardian Sea drones. And of course, their technology. Of course, Raman Puri is right. We can't touch the software. But the operation is in our hands. Our pilots have operated these aircraft. And I don't think those nations knew how to operate those aircraft, whether it's the, uh, the, the, the Mirage is now the Rafael. So I think a lot of responsibility then devolves on the DRDO, whose budget has gone up. And a self help. We have talked about Bessie. That model, getting the design, it started with Nilgiri thereafter. And now the Navy has designed an aircraft carrier. It has got all the software inside, except probably the L-40 radar and uh, the Barak system, which has got. That ship is also running on software. Thing. So I must say, uh, it has been a, a, a very good discussion. But we have to also be practical. That what is India? And let us also say, that little bit the Air Force was uh, fairly rich. The Army was very rich because of its manpower intensive, which General uh, late, uh, 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 you know, CDS, General, uh, he has tried to take steps, rationalize whatever he did. He wanted to change the pensions. He wanted to change the retirement dates and all. There was not much argument going on about it. But if we can sit down and do that, I'm sure that uh, we will relook at this budget slowly, analyze it just two days. And we've done a wonderful job in those two days to bring out all these figures. The final estimates are yet to come. And when we do that, I think we should be generally happy. Thank you so much, Ranji, sir. And uh, now finally, we go to Raman, sir. He already given some suggestions. But Raman, sir, before I close the discussion, I have one question from you. You run Please. an organization which has so many of those MSMEs. So you uh, tell me one thing, I and mean, that is just one little question which I have. Will all this make in India and Atmanirbhar Bharat be able to fulfill the deficit which is existing in the three forces? Both yes and no. Today, we have got about eight to 10,000 companies in the MSME sector working in the aerospace defense sector. Uh, no company can survive if they are having all the eggs in aerospace defense itself. If you look at the defense news top 100 companies, only 15 to 20% companies are depending only on aerospace defense business. There is a dual technology business happening. So one thing is very clear. So my interaction with last two years or three years has been there are the companies which came into India 25 to 30 years ago. They were started by some IITians 
and then they are now family companies. The owners have become very old, 70, 75 plus. Their kids have gone to USA. They do not know how to continue. That is one issue. So they are now, some of these companies were ultimately the darling companies. Now they are facing NCLT. So we're trying to find them the buyers. The second type of companies are those who came with space background, went to DRDO, DPSU background. Now they are getting into expanding. But they, they do not have the financial muscle to go outside for exports because that's a different ball game. The good news is three years ago, a lot of companies who had no business, no idea about defense are getting into defense in a big way. Example number one, a guy from Karnal who has been doing export business for uh, sandalwood oil wants to start a business in drone. We have a warehouse company from uh, Bombay, no previous background of defense, wants to take the job of uh, some uh, you know digitization for the Indian Army. There is a will in India to join this sunrise sector. But the question is, where is the money? If any Indian MSME has to raise money from the banking sector, whether the city or state bank of India, they will never be competitive at all. We have been able to create that synergy of arranging funds. Let me tell you, I keep telling it again and again, money is not a problem today by investment. I have got at least two dozen investors, both private equity as well as venture capitalists, which company, which project we want to invest. Today morning also, I was in a hotel, the, you know, this uh, new airport coming up next to Greater Noida, you know, in the UP. We are people wanting to invest up to 500 crore in the MRO sector. But who's going to invest if there's no clarity? So clarity of policy is very important. Here I would like to give a small suggestion. The ecosystem is still working in silos. We have no database today, which is a common database of which are those top 1,000, top 5,000 companies who need nurturing. We have been creating on our own, investing time and money. To create data. So there are problems. But solutions are the decision making to spend that money and give the purchase order is very important. So the biggest handicap has been the defense acquisition procedure 2020 in which the offset was diluted. The civil aerospace and homeland security was removed. If you know in the last two years, civil aerospace has taken a very negative turn because of COVID. While we worked very closely with the government of India, to reduce the GST of MRO from 18 to 5%. But there is no way a company can survive only on military MRO. It has to be military policy. They're common assets. If a Boeing or an Airbus is flying, so is the AVAX, Air Force, Air Force also. Whether it's an engine MRO or an avionics MRO, common assets are there. So the question would be, I would say, please look at the overall Indian potential of MRO. Today, the aircraft is going to Singapore or to Dubai for repair or maintenance. Why can't it come to India? Now we are offering 5%. So that is one area where a lot of you know MSMEs can get benefited. Second was, as we see now the due drone policy, Indian skies will be flooded with a lot of drones. Our airspace management, traffic management will be there. Indian MSMEs can find solutions for this problem. So better technologies are there. Uh, the Ministry of Civil Aviation is working on it. Ministry of Defense is working. <clears throat> there are new solutions available. Better utilization of the airspace. Because more aircraft flying in India would be better for the country itself. It would be cost of reduction itself. Third would be the our old antique systems. Whether it's from Russian or non-Russian. If we have to find an indigenous or make in India support, then the solution is to use what the world is doing, what is called the 3D printing solution. We are having a lot of capabilities in India. We had tried to tell the government to reduce this GST from 18 to 5% like MRO. But this budget does not talk anything about that. If today there is a fleet from Russia or non-Russia, where the Army, Navy, Air Force, and a company from Bangalore or Hyderabad or from Noida wants to create that component under 3D printing, he'll never be competitive at all. 
So you'll keep on doing the way. You will take six months. 3D printing can do it in three days. If there's a screw which does not get available and you have to import it, if I can do it in 3D printing, give me advantage. Don't say because the X company from Israel or from Russia or France supplied me, so I have to only have this. If if this is the component which is available to me and it's not available because the OEM has closed the shop and there's a guy from Hyderabad want to do it in 3D printing, give him the diagram, he can do it. System doesn't, he says, I will do it only on L1. So there has to be some rationality behind that. So there are issues which can be, it's a very long debate. So right. I, I would have said, can... uh, have a relook at the offset policy once again and have a look at what we can do in-house. We are willing to bring uh, money on the table, absolutely no problem. In fact, I have got, you know, funds available from USA, from many sources all over the world, even from Japan. 15 year long gestation period. But somebody has to say, if I have a clarity of uh, projects, then only I'll spend the money, no? I take the money. Money is not a problem. Question is, have the will to do things and money will flow. That's it. Thank you. All right, sir. So thank you very much. So nicely explained. And Ranjit, sir, I was seeing your finger going up. Uh, do you have a point you want to make? No, a very brief point. Um, I think I read the full budget. It does not specifically say, but it does have 50,000 crores for SMMEs. And there's a mention that be priority for the defense. I think I'll be, have to look into that very well. Of course, the suggestions are very good. GST could not possibly, I think, have been changed in the budget. There is a GST council. The GST council should be convinced about it. And I'm sure uh, uh, Supuri is going to do something about it. But as it has all come out, the budget seems to be okay. It is the other implementational problems which are giving us a very big problem. So I would, again, without boasting, have a look at the Navy. He, uh, uh, so Bori has talked about it. Have a look at those. And I think sit down. And there is cup jointness coming up that I'm sure. And I'm very convinced that I did not understand Atman Nirbhar in the beginning. Yes, this time it has been told that you will have to go from 62% of Atman Nirbhar to 68%. That is in the budget. But I'm sure there are little uh, loopholes to it because today the security of the country is the most important need. And I don't think the government will let you down on that. And so if the, this was a discussion on the budget, I think it's been very good. Yes, many, many challenges are there. And of course, I'm glad they were brought out that there are challenges. Right, sir, absolutely. And before we say bye, yes, Raman, sir, wants a word at the end. So yes, sir, please go ahead. See, the good lessons from each service are there for us to imbibe. So uh, that's what I'm trying to say. The main issue would be whatever money is uh, allocated to each service, I would like to do a quarterly review of what has been the serviceability state of my platform systems, whether aircraft, radars, or XYZ. If a particular service, radar serviceability is less than 60%, but you have got your budget allocated more, next year your budget should be reduced. I have given you the money, but your serviceability of the fleet is just less than 60%. So there must be some yardstick of increase or depletion of the budget depending on what did the money. If we gave you all the money you wanted, you have spent 70%, but your fleet serviceability is less than 60%, some budget slashing must be done. So that is where the lesson would be that I have given you all the space you wanted, but end of the day, when I do quarter on quarter, month on month serviceability, you are not able to go more than 80% or you got so many vehicles in the army what is overall serviceability of uh, those uh, vehicles or tanks? Why they are sitting in the yards? So there must be some uh, carrot and stick policy of allocating more budget or whatever, and then uh, have some kind of you know uh, um, more utilization of the resources. This is what I was saying. Link the budget with also the you know serviceability status of the forces. Yeah, thank you. Right, sir. Actually, it's such a wonderful discussion with all of you gentlemen and you know I think at times I feel it becomes so unending because uh, you know there's so much more you know you want more like Charles Dickens said and they, uh, you actually want more in such situations but I'd really like to thank you all for being here with us wonderful discussion I'm sure the audience will just love it and uh, Chetali is waiting in the Cypress studios waiting for us to get back to her and thank you thank you so much all three of you 
Jenna Ashok, Commodore Ranjit Rai, Wing Commander Sapori, wonderful. I'm sure next time we all sit down, sit down to discuss, I'm sure we'll have a lot, lot, lot more to talk about. And uh, with this, I take you back to Chitali. Chitali, back to you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you, ma'am. As uh, when we began the discussion, when I said, yes, it's going to be a very absorbing one, definitely. I must say defense budget simplified. <laughs> so yes, it was great hearing your views and um, I'm, I'm sure our audience are going to enjoy the discussion as well. Thank you so much and have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. Jane. Jane.